What's going on, everybody? Hopefully you guys had a good week getting ready to roll into Valentine's Day weekend. Hopefully if you guys have somebody, you got something special planned for each other. Uh, real quick, though, I want to say thank you to everybody who has been subscribed to the channel. We're almost there. And if you're new, hit that subscribe button. We're almost at 3K. be giving away a hobby box next week, uh, baseball. Uh, other than that, I've been busy plugging away at taxes today, so if my mind skips a beat here, give me a second to regain my thoughts. I had to do a bunch of people's taxes for them today. Um, also, I've been stocking the store up. If you haven't checked streamcardbreaks.com out, Check it out. There's still two jumbos left, a 2021 top Series 1 baseball in there. If you just want to check the cards, like all the cards in the site, and you want to go from highest to lowest, just hit all cards for sale twice on the drop down. It'll pull it up that way for you. And I'm going to continue listing stuff over the weekend as well, too. But been getting, like I said, some emails and stuff and some conversations about market manipulation. And really when you talk about it it can go one of two ways onto it and this is all my opinion i'm not giving out like out what to go do or nothing like that this is all just straight for me being what i think and everything like that and if you guys have some comments please fill up the you know comment section down there i enjoy reading them i learn new stuff all the time i've been in a hobby since uh, 84 1984 i should say and there's been some spurts where I wasn't in it because of Army uh, duties and stuff, but I've kept up with most of it. So uh, I'm going to pull up stuff. I take a lot of notes. I'm probably one of the biggest people you ever see taking notes and trying to figure out what to buy into because I'm both an investor slash flipper, and I do have my collection as well, too. So sometimes it's kind of hard to go between the two, but let me pull this up here real quick. And this is stuff that I've been writing down, and I want to kind of share some thoughts with everybody. So, please get yourself beverage of choice. I don't know how long I'll be here. I'll try not to make it real long, everybody. So, when we talk market manipulation, a lot of people think it deals with fake comps or corner in the market. And what we mean by fake comps is to where, say, me and my buddy both own, and I'm going to use this because this is what's been going on a lot. 15 trout update rookie PSA 10s pops up there and population reports up there and stuff like that and you know we just want to get the market up some more to make some more money we could both post them on eBay and buy each other's stuff at higher comps and keep it staggering for a week because in reality we're already not investing much in those because we probably got them at two to five hundred dollars a pop way back in the day and just held them so what will happen is now we start making the uh, market go up which is market manipulation by that happening you know yes we're going to lose out on ebay fees because we want to make sure everybody sees it's been paid for stuff like that on it so that that's one way that people manipulate the market and a lot of times the way you could catch that is because they're going to use the buy it nows on there and w when it really comes into play they're not cornering the market because that's a different part on it. But they're basically just getting the price inflated up. And it just doesn't make a lot of sense. Because when you look at population reports, these cards change in hand. And then you'll sit there and look at different RAS rooms and card shows. And you can't figure out why are these not selling for the prices that I'm seeing on eBay. It starts making sense more in a way. And you got to really open your mind up onto it. And I, I preach a lot daily the always check population reports and everything when you start buying into cards and you want to invest versus being a collector. So cornering the market would be I have a large sum of money and I'm just going to buy every Mike Trout there is out there because then I own them all. And then as they pop up to sell, people are going to start paying more of a premium than I just start releasing them in different ways and I make money. Not so much fake comps because I cornered the market. And you can do that really easily, especially when you start getting into numbered cards. Because then all everybody thinks their people are seeing are just the base rookies out there. So you can manipulate the market in different ways. Now, there's a change with what's happened last year mostly on to it. And 
What it was is you had a lot of influencers and everybody had had a lot of money start dumping into sports cards. I've even heard there's a hedge fund coming out, and trust me, I've been dealt in stocks since 2011, so I have no idea, but I just thought it was quite interesting when I heard this. So you had people went in and they have businesses and stuff like that there, and they're taking, you know, they might be a billionaire, and they say, take 1% of my, you know, stuff and invest in the sports cards by, oh, let's go, LeBron James tops crumb rookies. I want 20 of them or 10 of them. So these people are out there buying these up because that's what their buddies are doing. And they're seeing that, you know, LeBron James, say, was $10,000 a year ago for a Topps Chrome rookie. And now they're sitting at thirty, maybe even 40000 I haven't looked one up in probably two, three weeks. They might be that high. I'm not even sure. But they, what they did is they went out there, and the market got manipulated because these guys are going out there buying 10, 20 of certain rookie cards, and it's raising the price up. It's another way to manipulate the market. It's not cornering the market because there's a bunch of people all out there doing this. Whether they're using, uh, I've heard people are using, I don't know the correct word is an agency or whatever, but these guys are basically brokering and buying these cards for them and then they're flipping them on the backside. So that, that's a big reason why you're seeing this right now. And I've been getting a ton of messages like, oh, Trey Young prisms are going down and everything. Well, you have to look. We had that big thing with COVID, then basketball came back, and everything shot up. And everybody kept wanting it to keep going up. Eventually, you will hit a soft market. Somewhere down the road, we will hit a soft market. It, it's You just can't keep going up the whole time. It's eventually got to dip back down. And it might level out. It might go back up. You never know. And right now, because there's nothing out there, that like the playoffs aren't coming up, You've got to start waiting for the teams to, you know, become playoff contenders and or setting records for certain players. And stuff will go back up. It always does. It's just that everybody was so used to that big boom, they wanted to keep happening. And now we're starting to go back and forth. So you had all these people gone by, like all these LeBron James rookies, Michael Jordan rookies, Lucas, um, list goes on and on. And they started drying them up because they're like, well, who else can we get? So they started now going back into more of your retiree players or your goats. And they started buying those up. So if you start looking, you're like, oh, my gosh, Barry Sanders, 89 score rookie, PSA 10s, how much? And you're like, wow, I remember buying these at $250, $500 a pop. That's because they started shifting focus somewhere else right now because the active players, there's nothing really out there to where – they're playing for it. It's kind of hard to explain, but it's no, there's like no playoffs going on. There's, you know, nothing like that's going to help drive that force. And these guys are all about making money. So for the actual collector, yeah, it kind of hurts if you're just getting back in. And if you held this stuff, you might have sold early. So manipulation, as I write on here, will create a demand also for the card. So when somebody, when they start going out there for, you know, a solid couple of weeks buying, everybody's like, oh my gosh, I got to get this card. It's going to hit 100000 or something like that. Just do your research a lot onto it. Um, and then, like I said, this is just a lot of stuff that I've been taking down in notes, and I just cut and paste stuff on this little slide here just to talk about. The trout updates, I just don't buy the prices, to be honest. I, I just don't see it. I could see it if it was his... You know, his first Bowman autos and stuff like that there because you can start getting in parallels where they're numbered and then off the grades. But that just a base tops trout, I I just, to me, I don't understand. They just keep shooting up. And the thing is, I've seen them to where I've seen them in shows and people trying to move them and they can't. So it kind of makes you wonder, like, if these guys aren't moving them, how do these prices keep going up? Don't know if it's fake comps, you know, maybe people are just trying to buy them again. But I, I really think that on the trout updates that there's a lot of, you know, a couple guys out there trying to push the price up. That's my opinion. I don't know. I could be wrong. So if you really look at the people since probably about a year ago just dumped absurd amounts of money into the hobby. Millions, millions and millions are just floating. If you guys haven't been to a huge card show, 
uh, in the past year, whether it's Dallas, California, just see the money being transferred. It's really hard to explain until you see it. Or if you're in like these secret little rooms, uh, Facebook groups and stuff, or, you know, a lot of deals used to be back in the day where, you know, nobody, you wouldn't see these cards moved and they were just between two people type deals. It was just those two people would know about it. Now, there's all kind of stuff out there. Golden auctions, you know, they're showing, hey, we're selling this here. Look what it's sold for and everything. There is a lot of money being exchanged on sports cards every day. And that kind of goes in route why I started hitting the scammer series that I've been doing because whether you have a new, well, let me rephrase that, whether you're a new, older, or getting back in collector, whether you don't have a lot of money, you have some money, or you have a lot of money, you don't want to get burnt, okay? And a lot of people that I've talked to have been doing this for years. We've seen the ups and downs. I mean, oh, we went through the 90s saga, and now all the stuff in the 90s is just going insane as well, too. And sometimes, I can tell you, some people are all about the artwork of the card. So you got to do a lot of research on this stuff before you start putting your money in it. And I'm going to hit one more topic because... This here really deals with the GOAT slash retiree versus the active players. Again, just my thoughts onto this stuff. So I still think the active players towards the play, I should say playoffs, could have a rebound, and I think they will, to be honest. Um, I just don't see going out there and buying Tim Duncan rookies or David Robinson rookies for absurd amounts right now because... You have your goats out there, Larry Bird, Michael Jordan, even LeBron who's still playing, Kobe Bryant. You know, those guys there are still going to go up. I, I honestly believe that Kobe might dip a little bit in price after a Hall of Fame. That That's me. I, I don't know. I could be wrong. I've been wrong before in the past. But you have to really look into it. To me, I would rather spend my money researching LeBron and Michael Jordan cards that people aren't thinking about buying and try to put my money there because they're a more solid bet than going out and buying David Robinson or Tim Duncan rookie cards. That's me. I don't collect them. Um, I'm looking for something that I know five, ten years down the road is still going to be holding pretty much value because if you think about vintage, we always said was always money there. And it would stagger up. You never really seen dips into it. And now the vintage is even going way, way up in price. You could just start looking at Ripken, 82 Tops Ripken rookies to uh, Sandberg rookies, Boggs rookies, all that stuff. Mattingly, 84 Tops. I think it just sold for twelve or 1500 So it, it, there's a lot of research that goes in when you, I start buying into stuff. And... A lot of times I don't tell people until afterwards, just for the fact is I want to get a little bit of my stuff in before um, everybody else starts uh, buying the stuff up and going off of what I'm saying. So if you really look, though, like I said, the modern prices, everybody started off with the modern with the boom. Now they started moving to the goats. And what I'm looking at is the goats are starting to get high and unattainable for a lot of people. So you have to really search in areas around there. And you just got to look at stuff. And like I said, this is just some of my notes and everything onto it. You want to look at spillage and everything else onto it. So Jordan's a hot commodity now. What cards of Michael Jordan are going to be part of that spillage, basically? There's cards out there, and I'm hunting them down. But and you guys will probably see them over the next couple of weeks. I'll show a couple of them off and that. And whether they get 9s, 10s, 8s, there's still something with value into it. Because if you start looking, look at a 90 Fleer Jordan, what it's going for. My goodness, a year ago, I think they might have been a hundred bucks. So, just just be cautious of what you're doing and what you're buying into. Look at pop reports. I can be the best thing I can tell you, because I'm a firm believer to where if it's low in pop, it's always gonna uh, keep its value. If it's a serial number card and say it's out of ninety nine, even though there's fifty graded PSA ten, tell you what, they're still only ninety nine that card made versus you know. Tens of thousands of Luca Prism uh, rookie cards that are out there. And you can see the pop reports on it. But like I said, mostly playoff run, I think it's going to, they'll start pushing back to modern stuff. And as far as Trey Young and stuff, you know, if you believe in him and you think that he has a future at the Hawks down the road or he's going to go to another team and 
you know, make a super team up, it'd be time to start buying them now beforehand. I don't really want to touch what I think on uh, base cards down the road, uh, if they're going to keep going sky high or not, because I haven't really put a whole lot of effort into it. I have my own thoughts on to it. I just don't know if it's going to hold up or not, what, what I'm thinking will happen down the road. But you got to think, there's going to be some steep curves in here with what everybody's going after. You have to get above that curve or already have the stuff that's getting ready to go into the curve if you're looking to make money on this stuff. Whether it's wax or whatever it may be, and as you guys know, wax can need to be really good to you. It can be a break-even box or it can really hurt. Hurt big time. Spending $5,000 in an NT box, getting $500 in cards out of it and stuff like that. But basically, I want to hit on manipulation because everybody basically has their own definition of manipulation and how it's used. To me, when I'm talking market manipulation, it's because if people are going out there and either cornering the market or, as of now, people are investing into the market. And like I said, Topps Chrome, uh, LeBron's the perfect example onto it. I would start looking elsewhere for something that has a nice artsy look to it. I don't even know if artsy is a word, but like a nice art to it or something. And I'd, I'd pick up one, two, or three. I mean, I'm not going to dive in 10 or 20 of anything anymore. I did that with Luca, and that was probably the biggest fluke ever, to be honest. <laughs> Normally, I have a couple cards, not what I had in Luca. But take a look. I mean, at it and everything. Market manipulation can mean different things to everybody. It, it can be a lot of people with a fake comp thing called manipulation. It is. But... It's basically what I want to talk about. What I wanted to talk about is just the way the stuff's been increasing. And now it's dipping and people are getting worried. And it, here's a perfect example. So you have these guys that are going out and buying 10 or 20 LeBron James Topps Chrome rookies. I'm just going to say at $40,000, right? Say they buy 50 to 100 of them. These companies out there doing it for people and everything else. Okay, so I have one. All of a sudden I'm like, man, I could use that money. I put it on eBay and I get like 30000 for it. It's because it's, you know, those people already bought what they wanted. I missed the wave on to, yeah, I still got 30000 I probably invested, you know, 5000 we'll say. into It's still a good profit, but you just got to pay attention to stuff. Don't get frustrated with the hobby out there. As always, you guys feel free to make comments on to here. I try to do my best responding back. Uh, same with the emails as they float in as well, too. Uh, I wanted to really hit into this a little bit here without going over 20 minutes, and I'm coming up close onto that time. I'm just not a person real big into long videos, and I am debating on doing something. Uh, I don't know if I want to do Zoom with somebody or just have them on the phone as we talk about stuff, maybe FaceTime, I don't know, something like that there. Just to where you have an opinion of somebody else, and you can just see how some of my you know conversations go with different people, and you always hear all these different ideas across the board out there. It's not saying that that person's wrong or I'm wrong or you know we both could be right. It's just you got to do a ton of research onto what you're looking at, understand how the flow is going with cards. And expect that eventually we're going to hit a soft market out there. And you want to be prepared when you hit that soft market because things that you bought could be at the bottom of the barrel out there during that time frame. And you never know when it's going to rebound. You look at the 90s stuff, how long it took afterwards for that. But this is a totally different scenario, too, with what's going on. But again, everybody, I do appreciate you guys always listening to me rambling and videos and everything out there. I just, I've been, like I said, mostly I've been getting some emails that talked about market manipulation. I want to do a video on to it just with some explanation of why you see stuff happen in different ways. Again, purely my thoughts. It's nothing fact. You know, I, I would never go out there unless I was for sure saying, hey, these guys are doing this for sure. But I do know most of this stuff is pretty much close to being truth on to it. And I at least want to share some of the information out there with you all. Other than that, you guys have a good weekend. I got some other videos coming out. You guys might enjoy this uh, coming up on Sunday and Monday. Uh, one with some fake PSA labels out there. And another one, it's going to show, uh, I think it's a 71 Tops Willie Mays. Some counterfeit ways if you start getting into vintage as well, too. Other than that, take care, everybody. I'll see you guys live sometime next week.